pretty sure you once yelled at me about Hilly. Like, I don't, I'm not Hilly. Don't ask me. What's up, everybody? It's Keithy from GhostColdMag.com, and I'm here with the one and only Tommy Victor Prong. Hey, Keith. How you doing? Thanks for having me on oh. your show. Always a pleasure, man. It's always great to chat with you. As many times over the years we've chatted. Welcome back to New York City, your home. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here at Brooklyn Bazaar for the Big Prong Show with Marauder. What a great lineup. It's a super throwback uh, tonight, but uh, also two bands still doing cool shit in 2019. Yeah, man. I'm really excited. I mean, I haven't played Brooklyn Wow, uh, Lemoors, uh, maybe in 2002, the, the new Lemoors. So uh, this is great. We were just on tour with Agnostic Front, and unfortunately they're playing uh, at the same date as us, but uh, at uh, the Vans uh, thing at the Knockout Center. So we couldn't get on that show because uh, they don't consider Prong like a skate-oriented band or something. So... Um, Ed Farshty from Armageddon Productions was kind enough to um, create a show for Prong here back home in Brooklyn. Killer. We go way back. We know Ed forever. So uh, Shout out to Ed Farshty. Shout out to Ed and Armageddon Productions. Good job. And uh, again, wonderful to have you here. I know this is the end of a long tour cycle for you for Zero Days. Uh, but there's also new stuff coming out beside the recent single from the last album. You have a brand new EP coming up in November, right? Age of Defiance? Yes, it's called Age of Defiance. It's two... New tracks, very cool tracks, and then three live songs, um, and uh, you have to see the which one live ones out of our long history that we've picked for this one, uh, recorded live in Berlin, so uh, that's included in the EP, and uh, I'm, I'm almost more excited about the packaging I was telling you about. I mean, uh, you mentioned there's a fella here with a Rooting Live shirt on, which is a good shirt. Um, this new packaging is just outrageous. I mean, I could not believe it, the story behind it. Um, uh, I started dabbling with painting and stuff, and, uh, uh, I sent the guy from Steamhammer one of my paintings. He's like, well, I don't know about that. I mean, it gave me an idea for something else, and then it matured into this amazing thing that this guy did. So, um, I'm really happy about it. Because sometimes I see, like, the artwork, and I'm like, yeah, it's good, it's fine, you know, it's, it'll do. But this one I'm very excited about. Killer, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about your painting. I hadn't really thought to, you know, touch on that, but I, I'm glad you brought it up. It's something I don't think a lot of people know you know about you or know from you. I didn't do it for a long time. Or I, I mean, I, my background was sort of like art, really, when I was a kid. And, uh, and I played music, too. But uh, uh, I always drew... And then uh, I became a member of LACMA, which is a L.A. community uh, museum of art. And they had a couple of classes in there. And I started, I took a couple. And then I was like, man, this is cool because there's no rules with art. And it's sort of like I have, how I thought about music was years ago, like with prom. We just sort of did it, you know, like we didn't worry about formulas. And we took bits and pieces from everything and sort of throw it in, into our own canvas, you know. And uh, now I can really just do that with, with paints and art and not really worry about making a buck or anything. It was just fun. So, and it was relaxing. And well, I really got into it. Like, and we, I, my fiance and myself moved into a new house, uh, rented a house, a small place in uh, Glendale, California. And um, you know, the walls were bare. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to like, I'm just going to interior decorate this place. So I was like, I, was like I, I created my own paintings for the, for the room. So a very feng shui, you know, the whole thing. So I was, uh, it was a great project apart from, you know, working on songs. And I did work on a lot of songs. We were going to put out a new al full length album. And uh, like I had written probably about 15 songs, demo them out, lyrics, everything. And, and I was like, you know what? This sounds like a Tommy Victor solo record. It doesn't really sound like a prong record. And I was like, I'm not going to put out a Tommy Victor solo record. So we just picked the two strongest songs. No, one of the strongest songs. And then I wrote another one. And that's what the new EP is. So I, I did work on a whole bunch of music during the last year. But uh, it's all in the garbage can, most of it. I just said, the hell with it. Like a lot of paintings got thrown out. I was like, this sucks. I threw it out. <laughs> right. Well, <clears throat> it's important to be able to self-edit, I think, as you get older in general in anything. 
Yeah, man. And obviously music, you play it and the sound is there and you hear it and then it's gone. And it you, is gone. You live with it and art, you put it up and look at it for a long time, right? That's or look away. And uh, so I know it's a different kind of experience for you, but I know you and I have talked before about the changes in the music industry. You came up at a time when albums still physically sold a lot and you guys move a lot of merch always. But I know that you had you know some disdain about the current state of the industry. So I think it's a very refreshing take to do an EP right now uh, and you know a couple of new songs and just kind of put it out and leave it there and you know, see what it does as opposed to uh, you talked about the the rigors of a whole new album. I know Zero Days was a long project. Well, we got lucky. I mean, uh, uh, with Steam Hammer Records, I mean, they've been very supportive. Like they they anything that we do, they're like right on. And he's like very excited about it, Ali Han. So I mean, if it wasn't for him, we'd be really in a lot of trouble because uh, I really had a hand in him. He's been very creative with the makings of the records. And like their art department is the one, like what the guy from the actual label is the one that's helping us out on with the art, or the, which is such a big part of the whole thing nowadays because uh, like you said like the t-shirts the whole thing that's more the whole look of the experience is almost outweighs the actual product or something because people don't buy the cds anymore what are you going to do with them so it's like the artwork has to provide for like you know shirts and other things anyway uh as far as like the music business uh yeah i like this ep thing because um I think I really spent a lot of time on the, getting these songs dialed in right. When you have like, oh my God, we have 13 songs. We got to put this together. The mixes we, we take are shorter. This, we spent a lot of time on the mixes. And it was, I, I, I think you're going to find, I guarantee people will say, holy crap. I mean, this is, this sounds really good. Like every, it, it's, it's up another level because it's only two songs, two new ones. Right on. I love hearing that. And uh, also, I think it maybe it shouldn't be a surprise that you got into painting and that you're very uh, artistic in other areas because Prong is one of those bands that, to me, has always had a fantastic visual sense and a visual style. Not just the logo and the iconic Prong logo, but all your artwork albums, like we saw the Ruining Live shirt earlier, but in general, across the whole spectrum of the career, is all, it's never been just kind of, I think the first EP was like one monotone, monochromatic thing. And ever since then, it's been like... Phew, all yeah, I mean, we got like we had we had some great artists work with us, like with Sean Taggart <clears throat> on the first EP, and then Pusshead worked on two album covers, and then uh, <laughs> myself and Terry Date in the control room did the cleansing cover because uh, the the original cover that we had got rejected, and I got I can I have a photograph of memory. We were mixing, I know we were tracking the cleansing record, and they wanted the artwork ahead of time, so. Uh, He's, I got a call from our manager, Walter Bryan. He goes, they're not, they're not going for the, the cover. They said it, it, they had a problem with it. So I was like, you know what? I know what to do. And uh, I, I said, we're going to get an eyeball and put a fork in it. And Terry, go, Terry sent the runner out to get a, a, a goat's eye. And then we had like, I was eating a, a, a shrimp cocktail. And I put the, the fork into it on this newspaper and that was the cover. We took a picture of it and sent it in and said, this is the cover. And they were like, wow, this is cool. I mean, we did it in like 10, you know, by the time we went to the butcher and got that back. Like the photo and everything, it took 10 minutes. So no, go no goats were intentionally extra harmed in the making of that album cover. They no, were already no, no, no. harmed. It was, it was from the butcher shop. Right. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> it a bull's. It had to be a bull's eye or a goat. I mean, a goat's eye. What, what would they, I mean, lamb's eye. I mean. I don't remember if it was a, it must have been a bull, like a cow's eye or something. Mm, it's very prominent. It was, it was pretty big laying there on the, on the control. <laughs> That's amazing. That's an amazing mixing board. What an amazing story, man. Yeah. What a great anecdote. Uh, I know you just finished the 25, 25th anniversary tour behind cleansing. And uh, I've asked you before about sort of nostalgic things, but it's interesting that uh, you mentioned the eye because the eye also factored in the video for snap your finger, snap your neck. And I think if that song wasn't so powerful and, and clearly one of your signature songs that people love the band for, but that video was like mind blowing when you saw it the very first time at like dinner time on MTV uh -huh. in like 1994, or early 95. And you saw that video just come on at like seven at night while you were eating your mac and cheese. And it was like, what is this? <laughs> oh man! I mean, we were so. I mean, we we were sort of gluttons for punishment in a way because uh, our our lawyer at that time said, "Well, you know what? Like, you guys think you're hot, hot crap right now, being on a major label, 
And it's like, you're just going to, he goes, you guys don't know what you're in for. And like, we were always like, wow, this is cool. Like, I, like, I mean, all those things cost money. And like, we always, I'm, I'm like, so like we, then we were one of the last bands I said, like, you know, they're not going to buy us out of our contract. They're going to try to make us recoup everything before they pay us anything. So I'm still like paying back those, those expensive videos now to this day. It's like, you know, we will never recoup. It costs so much to do those but i mean we were happy about it back then we're like wow we're on mtv this is amazing you know and it's like i never really took full advantage of it because uh you know like uh i don't know like you were saying earlier like I'm, I, to me to go around and go hey look at me i'm on mtv like to a bunch of chicks and stuff was never my style it was like you know i was married and i was like okay but it was cool you know like at least my mother like had Something to be proud about at that point. Oh, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And no, then I mean, you, it's weird, yeah, but we're still you. paying the consequences. Sure. All our videos, those expensive videos that were on MTV, I, have cumulatively cost us unbelievable amount of money. Right, Rude Awakening, too, is that a very... Was a, that was a Rob Zombie video, and he just jacked up the price. They wanted Rob Zombie. He's just like, anything Rob Zombie for you, you know, you want to do it. Like It was his first video thing. And, right. And, uh, you know... Uh, it was that was really weird because I remember I was living in Silver Lake and I'm like, I call him up. I was like, well, I was like so out of it. I was like, well, I was said, um, uh, they said this date that we're going to do the video. And then I woke up. And I'm like, I haven't heard from anybody about this thing. And then I call him up and I go, aren't we supposed to be doing a video like today? And he goes, well, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, come on down. Uh, everything's hooked up. No one told you about it. I'm like damn man like i didn't i didn't even know this before the internet or anything it's like no one even told me about it it's like i just went down to this thing and like you know he goes i go what about clothes he goes i got clothes for you to wear and then we dressed up looking like a bunch of idiots in that video but it's a good video but i don't think it represented the band at all right well luckily that's also a great song and a great album too so I, I think always with prong it's like luckily there's the visual style also that sometimes you were in control of and sometimes not but the music is what's forever right yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's not the greatest prong record there is, but I mean, we that uh, I think they screwed up the mix on that record. But um, anyway, well, I'm very critical of some of the. I, I know that I, we've discussed that before, uh, but I love cleansing personally. I cleansing's still think it's cool. Great. I think you know, it's, cleansing's a good record. There's some really strong parts. Our best part, I mean, slap your finger, snap your neck is amazing, and then uh, you know the ones that we play like cut rate and broken piece. Those Whose fist. Are, yeah, who's fist, yeah, of course. And then you know, another worldly device. Those are the ones that there was some of the other stuff is like okay, we do a little bit of test we were doing too. Nice. Yeah. I love to hear it. Yeah. Bring it out. Let's yep. do it. Uh so you have this EP coming out, and I know this is like I said, the end of a long cycle. Uh so as we wind this down, I know you uh, any thoughts on the future? Uh, obviously we're gonna put this EP out and then what comes next for next year? Anything you can talk about or not yet? I don't know. I mean, I it's hard to say about touring and stuff. I mean, we we've sort of been through a lot of places a lot in the last couple of years. So uh I'm not sure. I mean, um I have if something has to be really good for me to go out and, and, and do it. Uh, so I have to see, uh, like people ask, Oh, you know, like, you know, what's going on? I mean, like, you know, I, I, I can't see us like coming back to New York or playing like a headlining show in New York for, for a while. Or, uh, I mean, something has to be really, really, really good, uh, for, for us to go out again. I mean, like you said, that zero day cycle was really, you know, was sporadic and long. So we'll have to see. Indeed, I felt I lucky. Have any plans right now? I hear you. I felt lucky to see you twice in the last year, and now it'll be three, and I'm oh, super, cool. I'm super pumped. Lucky us here in New York and the East Coast that got to see you guys a bunch, and uh, lucky to anybody else if you got to see prong, get to see a prong show, you're in for a good night because it's gonna be always the deep cuts and some new recent stuff that's also killer. Tommy, man, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for Thank hanging you. out Thank with Ghost. You, man. Appreciate your support of us. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming back to New York and putting on a show here tonight. I'm Keefe from GhostCultMag.com. Tommy, Victor, and I are out. Good work. Thank you.